Hi there, my name is Shelby and I'm a machine shop TA here at the Mines Mechanical Machine Shop. Today we're going to be going over a general overview of the lathe. Now the lathe is one of the most valuable tools we have in the shop, but it is also one of the most dangerous. So I'm going to start off by talking about the safety required to properly operate this machine. Now you want to make sure any loose clothing like long sleeves are rolled up and tied back. You also want to make sure any long hair that could get pulled in the machine is up and uh, properly secured. Additionally, if you have any jewelry hanging down or strings on your hoodie, you want to make sure those are tucked away and secured somewhere that they can't get pulled in the machine. Additionally, our machines are equipped with lots of safety features to help you out. For example, we have a cover here that covers the chuck. Just make sure that you don't leave anything in the chuck that uh, isn't properly secured down. Additionally, our machines have an e-stop switch located right over here on the left-hand side. This will cut power to the whole machine and stop the spindle very quickly. Furthermore, you also have a brake pedal down here that you can stomp on to get the spindle to slow down quickly. Now that we're familiar with the safety required to operate this machine, let's get started by starting with the chuck. Now the chuck, in this case, is a three jaw. Uh, we also have four jaw and a collet chuck available, but most of the time you're gonna be using a three jaw chuck. Now what's cool is as you tighten or loosen this, all three jaws move out at the same time. Now we'll take our chuck key, We'll insert it into the chuck, and you can see I'm going to loosen it to raise out, kind of loosen the jaws. We want to make the jaws large enough to handle our stock. In this case, it's going to be a Delrin rod here. So I'm just going to loosen until I can fit it in. Now you want to make sure you have enough stick out in your part to do all the features that you want. In this case, I'm going to leave about two inches hanging out. Now I'm going to tighten it down and secure my workplace or my workpiece in place. Now the biggest thing is to never leave the chuck key in place. So whenever you're done with it, make sure you pull it out of the chuck and put it back on the headstock out of the way of the machine. You also want to be aware that the all three jaws are also rotating with it, so keep in mind that you, you need proper clearance with the tool holder uh, in order to properly machine it. You don't want any part of the chuck to hit your tools. Now that we're familiar with how to hold our workpiece in, let's talk about our tooling. Now, all of our lathes in the shop are equipped with a two-position quick-change tool, tool post. What this lets you do is configure a single tool holder to have, say, a tool for turning the diameter of your part and a tool for facing the diameter of your part. So, for example, to insert a tool, simply slide the dovetail in place. Now, if you need to adjust the height of it, you can change the height by changing these set screws right here. Once you have your height properly set, you can lock it down in place by moving this knob. Now this is super cool because in this example we could face, sorry, turn the part down and then if we want to face it, we just loosen it, remove our tool and put it in the other position. Once again, we can adjust the height if we need to and then uh, once we get it properly set, we can lock it down and now we can face our part, which is super cool, it's really handy. Now you don't need, diff you could always use different tool holders and stuff like that, but it's just really convenient to have the ease of use. So now that we know we can position our tool in two different spots, it's really important to set the height of the tool accurately. Now the easiest way to do this is using a scale, which you can go over to the tool chest and grab. Once you have your ruler or scale, you're going to want to pinch it between your workpiece and the tool. Now this doesn't have to be super tight, just usually tight enough to hold the ruler in place. Now once you have the ruler pinched in place, you're going to want to step to the side of the machine and take a look. Now we can see that our ruler is leaning away from us, which tells me that my tool is a little high. Uh, to adjust that, you're going to want to back the tool off, loosen the tool post, and then you're going to loosen the set screw to change the height of it. Now, if you loosen it, the tool is going to sit lower, whereas if you tighten it, your tool is going to sit higher. Now, I'm going to loosen it a lot to kind of exaggerate and show you what the other direction might look like. Now we'll go ahead and tighten it and I'll grab my ruler again and pinch it in place. Now we can see that the ruler is pointing towards me, which tells me that my tool is too low, or below the center line of our stock. So I'm going to have to lift the tool up to get it closer. I'm going to loosen it off again, loosen my tool post, and I'm going to tighten the set screw this time. Now to double check, we'll tighten it back, we'll pinch our ruler in place, and this might take a little bit of iteration. Now we can see it's leaning away from me, so I need to go a little bit lower. So I'm just going to do some small adjustments here. 
and ideally you want it to be uh, pretty close to straight up and down. So I would say that this is a good starting point. Once you get your facing tool set, I like to face the front of my stock and see if I leave a small little nub behind. If there's a little pin left behind, that means your tool height is probably a little too low and you'll have to lift it up. Furthermore, it's really important to get your tool height set properly for a part off tool. If your part off tool is too high or too low, it risks damaging the tool and breaking during the operation. Additionally, you can have multiple tool holders set up. In this case, I have one for turning and facing and another tool holder for parting. So in this case, I could part off my workpiece. Now, it wouldn't work too well in this current setup because it's at an angle. So you can change the angle of this tool post by using the socket that's welded to the end of our chuck key. If you push this guy on top, you can loosen it and rotate this to any angle that you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and take out our tool and we'll put in our facing tool just for fun. Once again, I just slide it down and then lock it in place. Now that we know how to hold our, our uh, tools and our workpiece, we need to get more comfortable moving the machine around. Now our lathes have three main axes. You have your z-axis, your x-axis, and the compound. Now what's cool about the compound is you can rotate this to any angle you want, and that can be used to either turn a taper or get a really fine feed adjustment for doing fine lathe work. Additionally, if you've noticed on the DRO back here, the z, and the x-axis are basically reading out in real time the position of them. Keep in mind that the x-axis is read out in diameter mode, so make sure you always know that and you can see it by the symbol located right over here on the top right of the number. Uh, also, if you want to move the machine in a specific direction, make sure you're using the right hand rule. That means point your thumb in the direction you want the workpiece to move, sorry, the tool to move, and then your fingers will curl showing you which way to turn the dial. So let's say we want our tool to move backwards, pointing my thumb towards the back of the machine. Fingers are curling clockwise, and we can see that it's moving towards the back of the machine. Same thing with the x-axis, or sorry, with the z-axis, but it's a bit funky because it's like kind of a direction change. But we can see that if I turn it clockwise, I'm moving to the right, and counterclockwise, I'm moving to the left. Now, occasionally, you might need to use the tail stock to either support your workpiece or drill a hole on the end of the workpiece. Now all of our lathes will always have a three jaw chuck and a life center near the back of it. Uh, in this example, we're gonna go over how to put a kind of a chuck or a life center in the, in the tail stock. It's always gonna be the same setup no matter which tool you're using. Uh, these guys all have a Morse taper on the end here and that means that you just need to insert it in the end of the quill, rotate until you find the keyway, and in this case I need to extend it out a little bit more might need to have about an inch or so sticking out. So I'm inserting it, finding that keyway, and then I'm seating it in place. Now this tool is stuck in the quill, and uh, if we ever want to remove it, all you have to do is loosen the quill until you have about a half inch or so sticking out, and it will pop the tool out, and we can put it away. Additionally, we can also move the tailstock in and out, and then lock it in place. So say we want to move it over here, we can use this style, sorry, this knob to lock it down in place, and now I can't move it back and forth. And then if we're using a live center, we extend it out. Once we get to the position we want, we can use this, uh, this knob to fully lock it down, and you can see I can't move it anymore. I always like to have it out of the way and at the end of my table, just so I have full movement if I'm not using it. Now, I think we're just about ready to get machining. But the first thing we need to do is make sure our RPM is set to the proper RPM for the material and diameter we're turning. Now, anytime you interact with the chuck, you want to make sure that e-stop is pressed and the machine uh, has no power so we can properly and effectively work on the chuck. Now, if you come over here, we can see there's three different ranges. There's kind of a high, a medium, and a low range. Uh, and we can select different RPM. Now, for Delrin at this diameter, we're going to be turning around 540 RPM. So to do that, I want to make sure I'm in the middle range by looking at the left knob. And then we can see we're currently at 370 RPM. So to change it, we're going to push the knob towards the machine and turn over to the desired value. Now, occasionally, you might have to move the chuck to get it into gears. And once it's in gear, you should feel all the gears kind of moving in place as you rotate the chuck. Now, if you weren't in gear, it's very easy to turn 
So you always want to make sure before you turn on the machine that the machine is properly in gear. Now that we have our RPM set, we can close our cover. This should, once again, make sure that you don't have this chuck key in place, and it has to be closed in order to turn the machine on. And we need to pull the e-stop button because we're just about ready to turn the machine on. Now, to turn on the machine, we have two different options. We can either have our workpiece turn towards us, or we can have it turn away from us. Now, 90% of the time, you're going to want it to be turning towards you. But, for example, say you have a left-hand drill bit or something like that, you might need it to turn away from you. We'll start by getting it turned on probably 90% of the time with it turning towards us. To do that, press the red knob out and then down. We can see it turned on the machine and it's going to start rotating towards us. Now to turn off the power, we can either stomp on the foot brake or move this to the neutral position. You can see I stomped on the foot brake, it cut power and it came to a stop. And now we can just move this to the neutral position so we're ready to get started next time. Now let's say we want to get it turning away from us. To do that, we just push the knob out and then up. And now we can see the spindle is turning away from us. And once again, to turn it off, I'll use the knob this time. We'll move it to the neutral position. And we can stop on the brake and get this to a complete stop. Now remember, if you ever want to measure or interact with your workpiece, to always hit that e-stop and open the cover. And now you're safe to work with the part, measure with your calipers or mics, or inspect the part. With that, I hope you learned a lot about the general overview of a lathe. My name is Shelby, thanks for watching, and remember if you ever have any questions regarding the lathe, ask a TA next time you're in the machine shop.